Hi, I'm Lucretia Hayes, and I'm coming to you again today talking about uh, sexual abuse and domestic violence and healing from past pains and failures. And I just really want to encourage everyone to send this video today to not only take to heart the things I'm saying, but also to share it with others because you really don't know. You can't judge by looking who's been abused or who's going through some severe emotional trauma. We don't know. It's not based upon what kind of money they have. I've had doctors, wives, and lawyers and judges come to me behind the scenes about things that happened to them as a child. I've had regular people, what we would call regular people, just the average Joe working nine to five who still has pain. At, at certain memories and I've had everything in between and so we cannot judge by looking so I encourage you to please share the video with other friends and family members and let them know that there is someone out there who understands their pain and understands the process of healing from all that hurt what a lot of people don't know about abuse is that it has a tendency to linger in the minds of the victim because we still have not yet figured out or rationalized why it happened. And when you don't, when you can't make sense of an action in your own mind, it causes you to keep dwelling on what happened. And eventually, because the mind can't find a satisfactory reason because saying a person is insane or they just have problems don't satisfy you when you've been hurt on that level so you begin to look inside and look at yourself and think that okay maybe it's me maybe it was how I dress how I speak how I walk how I talk and when you deal with victims of abuse you notice that they are very very self self-conscious they're always taking a double look and a triple and then then a fourth and maybe a fifth look at how they they are and they're very they don't want to give off the wrong impression and so they second guess the things that they say they second guess their talents and they never feel good enough because of that one thing that they've never been able to rationalize they're blaming it on themselves now I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist but I've been there I've been abused I've been both physically and sexually abused as well as verbally I've had financial problems I've had family problems just my share of problems and so I understand healing and the process that it takes to heal from hurts like that when, when it comes to healing, the first step is realizing that no matter what you do and how you feel, you can never go back and change what happened to you. Regardless of how long you toil over it, no matter who you think is at fault, at the end of the day, you can't change it. It's become a part of you for the rest of your life. And once we really accept that fact, then it's easier from that point on to process our way through the pain. The second thing is realizing that that was one moment, and maybe it was a defining moment, don't get me wrong, and it might have been one of the most traumatic moments of your life, but it was one moment out of a whole life. And when a person hurts us, they hurt us during the time that they're hurting us. And we might not can help it at that time, but every moment after that pain ends, the actual pain of what they're doing to us ends, it's our choice if we continue to hurt behind it. Now, I know that sounds easy and simple because when you're hurting, you're just hurting, and you really don't feel like there's anything you can do about it. And I'm not telling you not to grieve, but what I'm saying is once your grieving process is over, realize that you're not, you have to make up your mind that you're not going to allow something to happen one time or maybe 20 times in a moment of your life to define the rest of it all of it and so that was one of the things that helped me it was that the last my last um, sexual abuse issue happened in 2004 and it was by, at the hands of a preacher and um and I was angry with God because at that time I myself was a preacher, still naive, very gullible, you know. And um, I didn't realize the fullness of why the Bible say gifts come without repentance. Either way, uh, I had to make a decision. And I didn't have a long time to make it. If I was going to let this one thing that this person done drive a wedge between me and God and make me second guess my own calling, second guess every person in ministry, every man, period, it, it made me 
wake up and deal with stuff that I had left behind, I thought, before. All of it came clashing down around me when he did what he did. And But I, I decided that I didn't want my life to be defined by what he done to me because that's not fair. That's like being raped twice. It's like he's already raped me, and now he's going to take my life from me or what he done is going to take my life from me for the rest of my life. That's nowhere near fair. And so we don't have to continue to allow the pain to, to motivate us in our decisions, how we interact with other people, make us paranoid because everybody's not a rapist and everybody doesn't want to hurt you. I'm not saying trust everybody, but I'm saying don't let one thing or uh, something that one person done to you make you push everyone else out of your life. That was a mistake that I myself made. And many other people that I know who've been abused have made the mistake of not allowing other people to love them, not allowing other people to get too close. And it's like the closer other people get, the more nervous they become, and then they begin to react out of pain because they're afraid. If you look at a wounded animal, and uh, they are very protective over whatever area that's wounded, and if you even get close, they will bite you because in their mind, they're trying to protect themselves, and that's their way of protecting themselves. You know, when you look at a dog and you're feeding them, if some other dog gets close to a bow, you'll notice that low growl that goes on, or a bear that has cubs. If someone gets close, you'll notice that sound that comes out of that, that mother bear's mouth. It's the same principle. It's the nature of being human. However, it doesn't mean it can't be controlled. We have to learn to love again to have faith again that our life can be better and to take the power back from the person that abused us by choosing every day of our life every moment of every day of our life that we're going to take our life back we're going to be successful we're going to be happy and we're going to be joyful and it's hard to be happy and joyful when you're paranoid about everybody when you're always wondering who's going to hurt you next you have to release that in order to embrace true joy now i know everything i just said sounds real good but it's like those are words how do i do it you do it one moment at a time in your life there's nothing that i can tell you that can make it better instantly overnight it's something that you have to constantly choose and then one day you'll wake up and you'll look back and you'll think it's been years since i shed a tear over this situation it's been a long time since this or that happened or since this memory came and you'll wake up and realize you're victorious one moment at a time every day of your life until the temptation is gone for you to hate or or be bitter against the things that happened in your past until the pain is gone to a degree where you can talk about it and you don't cry and you're you're not hurting on the inside and you're not enraged or angry to the point where you forgive yourself and allow yourself the freedom to have a successful life i hope this was a blessing to you and if you need anything just be sure to drop me a line. My email address is lucretia.hayes at gmail.com, or you can stop by my blog. It's the rape of innocence blogspot.com. The rape of innocence.blogspot.com. And that is attached to my book, The Rape of Innocence Taking Captivity Captive, which is my bestseller. And it deals with my story, first of all, how I was abused, and then the things that had to happen for me to come out of that abuse. I hope uh, you all have the book, or if you don't, get the book and read it and give me some feedback. You have a good day.